Hello everyone. Things are getting really exciting. We're getting ready to move back aboard and head off sailing. Um, so lots going on this week. Jack is working on the washboards and some fantastic varnishing. I've got more sewing projects on the go and we look at some fantastic new kit to solve the refrigeration problem on our boat. If you watched last week's episode, you'll remember that um, Heidi has lent me her sail right, which is very exciting. So that can only mean one thing, and I need to do some sewing. So I'm gonna crack on with the aft cabin bunk on the starboard side. In last week's episode, I cut my pieces to size. Um, I have already sewn the strip that goes round the edge together because I had to test the machine. But now I'm gonna assemble them all and put the mattress in. So that's the starboard side mattress cover done. There's a bit more manipulation to do to get it into the corners, but it's, it's done. I've just got to fiddle with it a bit. The next project is a stair gate for Ollie to keep him in the saloon area. I've got this mesh fabric, so I'm just gonna do a, an area of mesh with a fabric or canvas border that I can pop on um, to the gate area. You'll see what I mean when I put it on the boat.
So that's the baby gate done for the saloon. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I just need to get some hardware to install it on the boat, but I haven't quite worked out how I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna have some poppers or something like that, but the next time you see it, it will be me putting it on the boat and testing it with Ollie. My next project is this. This is the top of the seat in the boys' cabin. Um, I just wanna put some foam on it and cover it in upholstery. I've got this old mattress that was um, came with a cot that Ollie never actually used. Um, so I've cut this to size and then I've got some scraps left over from the saloon and the boys' beds. Um, so I'm just gonna staple that over that to make a comfy seat. We're preparing to move back aboard our boat, having been house sitting for a bit. It's still a bit wintry here, so it's lovely to have the wood fire to keep us warm. But once we set sail and start heading to warmer countries, we're gonna need a decent refrigeration system aboard the boat. The original fridge and compressor on the boat is broken. Somebody has sent us this to fit, and um, we haven't had time to work out how to fit it yet. So we've got this, which is gonna be life-changing for us because it's a fridge and a power bank. All I need to do now is take this over to the boat. to the boat we've had this crazy idea um, to go and grab some shopping because we've got the air fryer in the boot test out the fridge put it in the fridge and go and make some lunch so this ac 180t power bank has two batteries in it so the cool thing about this whole system is you can take one of the batteries out put it in the fridge and it will power the fridge so it just goes in this storage pocket here like so. So now I can turn this on and set it up um, to put our shopping in so it's cold for the shopping. So I'm going to turn it down to three degrees. There you go. It's now cooling. So it's currently 16 degrees and it's going to cool down to three degrees. So you can power the fridge from the mains adapter or you can actually plug it into your cigarette socket on, in your car or van. But with that one battery in, it will run up to 25 hours on its own. So it's a bit wacky and out there, but we're putting this to its test by cooking bacon in the air fryer, using the power bank, getting the bacon from the fridge.
I've just pressed AC on here, which will send power to the AC outlet so I can power the air fryer. There it is, it's cooking. Now, obviously, we're going to be mostly using this aboard our boat, apart from the occasional time when we might take it ashore. But if you have a camper van or like to go camping or have a boat, this system is going to be really, really handy. The AC180T offers flexible charging solutions with the world's first four-in-one charging supported fridge. It uses LifePo batteries, which, as we know, are very, very stable and resilient to high temperatures. And it's also got an ice maker. Yeah. Let me hand you a bacon sandwich. Yeah. Mm. Is that right, Ollie? Mm. You want bacon sandwich? That's a little bit for you. Obviously, if you put both batteries in the AC180T together, you get more output out of it. But even with one battery in the fridge and one battery in the AC180T, we were able to power the fridge and the air fryer at the same time. Yum, yum, yum. Good job you've got teeth now. Go on, you can bite it off. This is quite a large fridge, but that's a good thing because you can carry loads of food in it. And also, when you put the extra battery in, it's, it's a bit heavy. But because of the, the wheels and the grab handles, I can move it and I'm only 12. We'd like to say a huge thank you to Bluetti for letting us have this set up to test, review and use on our boat. But of course, if you want to get your hands on one of these amazing Bluetti swap solar setups, go to the link on the screen now, which of course is a clickable link in the video description. So here it is on the boat. We're yet to decide where we're going to put it, but it's looking like we're going to put it here um, and make a box to go over it so we can use it as a seat for the chart table and access all the food that we need from the galley. One of the really cool things about this is because we're heading to hotter countries, this is actually rated to work in temperatures up to 55 degrees and it's very, very quiet. Currently you can hear it making a little bit more noise than normal because it's doing something fantastic. What it's doing is something that's gonna make us friends with everyone on all the anchorages. Currently in here, it is making ice. I am so excited about having chilled drinks in a hot country. So that's it guys, here's the Bluetti Swap Solar, the first ever combi fridge and power bank. And the reason it's called the swap solar is because you can swap the batteries from the power bank to the fridge, which means you don't have to have any cables. It's absolutely brilliant and it's going to be life changing for us. A few weeks ago, Dad started on varnishing these. Now, he did a pretty cracking good job on this side, but he hadn't finished the other side, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to try and do that today. But we also need to get rid of all these manky old vile varnish. Used to be nice, but not anymore. It's been subjected to years and years of hard wear and tear. Of course, Dad's here today, um, supervising me, making sure I'm using the tools properly and safely. And hopefully at the end of this, we'll have beautiful washboards for the aft cabin and the for forward companionway. Dad found um, when he was doing the other boards that if you set the planer to a really sh shallow level, um, it just takes the varnish off and doesn't really damage the wood much. <laughs>
So I've just finished planing um, both sides of this and I've noticed that one of these, yeah, this one is a bit wobbly. So I'm gonna need to glue and clamp that. But before I do that, I have to plane this and then afterwards I'll sand it and everything. The electric plane is a, is a really aggressive tool for this kind of work and um, it leaves little chinks in the wood so um, I'm just going over it with the electric sander to just, just make it better. sanded these um, we need to glue, glue and clamp this one because it's a bit wobbly here. I could remove this whole side piece and glue it fresh but I think that would cause much more damage than if we just put if we just opened the cracker up then got this little bit of plastic and just kind of smeared the glue into the crack. So now that I've finished gluing it up, I'm going to clamp it up, leave it to dry uh, with this um, little tool called the sash clamp. So while this is gluing, I can't I can't varnish it. So I'm going to sand the drips off these. Finally, I did it by myself. The mask was knocking my cochlear implants off.
Now then, it's all sanded. We need to varnish it. This is Epiphane's clear varnish. We'll be using a 50-50 mix for the first couple of coats. Having put the lid on, um, apparently it's supposed to turn the varnish tin upside down, so the varnish inside seals the lid, which stops it. Actually, I need to do that again. Stops it from going hard inside. I need to pour in an extra 25 millilitres of thinners to concoct the magic potion, which will seal our, our washboards. I'm going to give this a little bit of a stir, to, then, then it'll be ready to go. finished varnishing it I have to avoid the temptation to continue on with it because this varnish flows really nicely if just left alone so now I have to leave it for 24 hours till I can do the next coat thank you everybody I hope you enjoyed that thanks to our patrons as always and all of you lovely people that like and comment um, see you next week thank you bye bye <laughs>